Warning, the following contains subject matter that some listeners might find disturbing or difficult to hear. Listener discretion is advised. Classified for Cantalot Medical Research only. Patient name, Rarity Bell. Subject, one. Primary physician, Dr. Quest Colton, PhD. Date range of anomalous affliction, 12-12-1523 AB, after banishment, through 2-21-1524 AB. Case summary, this case involves one of Equestria's saviors, the bearer of the element of generosity, Rarity Bell, age 546. An inexplicably highly infectious affliction with rapid onset and extreme mortality rate was first reported, observed, and ineffectively treated. The following data logs have been compiled for research purposes in an effort to find a cure. Observation Notes 30th of Jeanettuary 48 days after the end of the Reign of Friendship Dr. Colton received troubling news today about a potentially unknown illness suffered by the patient subsequently known as Subject 1. At the doctor's request, a medical professional was dispatched to the subject's place of residence in Ponyville for a detailed observation. Upon arrival, Subject 1's demeanor was overall pleasant, albeit melancholy. She seemed fully cognizant and in control of her mental faculties. Attached is Subject 1's initial recorded interview and photographs provided by Subject 1 or Nurse Gentleheart. I am Nurse Gentleheart, sent for observation on behalf of Dr. Colton. I'm here with the patient Rarity Bell, recording this interaction for future analysis. It is my understanding you have had a strange affliction recently occur to you, for which you sought medical assistance. Could you please describe in your own words what that affliction is? Um, oh, you're ready? Does that little red light mean it's ready? Yes. If you could please describe the issue in detail. Oh, I am terribly sorry. I'm not so familiar with all the new gadgetry of the world. It seems like there's always some new fangled thing that ponies are touting around with. <laughs> Twilight is to try and explain them to us. Patient's demeanor exhibits sadness. You don't say. Anything else obvious you'd like to point out? I'm only keeping as concise a record as possible. Yes, I'm sad. I'm devastated. We all are. But I hardly think this issue is related to that fact. Sadness has nothing to do with this. Patient is indicating to her back left flank where it appears that blue gemstones are protruding from within and around her cutie mark. May I? <sighs> if you must. Upon closer inspection, these stones are cool, smooth, and firm to the touch. Not unlike the gemstone called sapphire. They appear to be growths coming from within rather than lodged into the fur externally. A gentle tug of the skin around the growths reveals more gemstone hidden just beneath. I apologize if I've caused you discomfort. That's the thing. There isn't really any pain anymore, per se. And truth be told, this wasn't the first uh, anomaly I discovered. Please detail for me that occurrence and timeline to the best of your recollection. Well, it... It was a week or so after we... I lost our dear princess, that I discovered something strange. You see, I was looking for just the right outfit to wear to the funeral when I discovered an old piece I had once made for Twilight when she was rather more normal pony size, if you will. I knew how much she loved that dress, and that with a little more black accents it would be the perfect way to honor her. Trouble is, I was completely out of onyx, and you simply cannot accent a funeral dress in a bright-colored gemstone. No sooner than I became distraught did I feel a piercing pain right here in my forehoof. 
patient is indicating to the front right forehoof just above the knee. Upon closer inspection, no abnormalities can be observed. I do not see any scarring or bruising. Well, they don't exactly bleed. At least, not blood. The first one, though, the one that came from this loose bit of fur here, it looked like a bruise at first. My skin was taut and blackened, and the sensation? Oh, well, there are no words to describe it. I couldn't move my hoof at all without a searing, sharp pain. I cried out, but there was no pony to hear it. All of my staff had already been excused for the day. I knew a specific salve I owned might ease the pain, but that meant moving to get up the stairs and retrieve it. <sighs> I, I decided to sprint for it, so there would be only a single burst of agony to get it over with, you see. The problem was, I was a tad uh, clumsier than I anticipated, and my hoof collided into my desk, the lump bursting upon impact. Patient is moving her hooves in a... Burst motion. It was awful, disgusting, truly holy vile. I expected blood and surges, but instead, a modest pile of onyx gemstones was dislodged from inside me. They were followed by a gushing, shimmery gray ooze. Oh, I was aghast. My stomach turned so violently I almost doubled over right there. I was shaking, scared to inhale a breath for fear of its putrid stench. But when I inevitably took that breath, I didn't smell a difference in the air. Curious, I even leaned in closer to take a sniff. Nothing. In that moment, I realized that once the little devils were out, the pain had instantly vanished too. After sitting there stunned for some time... I counted the dislodged stones and realized I had just enough for my gown. Almost like a strange answer to prayer. I went to tend to the wound, but when I wiped the excess uh, gray liquid away, my hoof seemed perfectly intact. There was no open sore at all. The only indication that it had happened was from a slight looseness of the skin being overstretched. Over the course of time... That has mostly faded, too. Had you been performing any strange spells, or taken any abnormal potions at the time? None! I am well aware of the spells I conjure, or the magic I ingest. The only magic I used that day was soothing salves and creams, but I'd been using them for years. Even so, I had that exact thought, too, and threw them all away immediately, just in case. I'm going to need a list of those said creams and salves and where you procured them from... You indicated this happened roughly four weeks ago, so I assume the originals are long gone now. When was the next incident? Well, I must admit, I've had several. Too many to count. You see, I discovered after that first incident that every time I pictured a specific gemstone in my mind, it would appear somewhere on me. Now, this might be a tad macabre, but... Sometimes we must do things to ease the pain, mustn't we? Once the gem lump formed, I would carefully, uh, puncture the skin to extract the gem before it became too painful. Don't give me that look. Pain is entirely subjective. You don't know what you would have done in my situation. I certainly don't need your judgment. Besides, that didn't last too long. After the third or fourth gem, the pain eased almost completely. Perhaps I was just used to it. I'm not sure. The oozing was also a little bit different in color depending on the gem I... Uh, created? Still no blood, however. Somehow I had turned myself into my own gem mine. It was so exciting for a creative pony such as myself to realize I did not need to bother my underlings to fetch certain stones. I've saved a bundle, too. All of these garments have these miraculous gems sewn into their design. Patient is showcasing her fashion wares hanging on displays or hangers around the boutique. I can observe several hundred gemstones just upon first glance alone. No need to sound so disgusted or horrified. Either way, until a few days ago, this was a wonderful gift. It's 
still is, but, well, as you can plainly see, I believe I'm getting a little more than I can bargain for. These sapphires here on my cutie marks refuse to break away. I've tried chiseling at them, and I can get little flecks here and there, but they never truly leave. It feels like if I manage to excavate one, three more take its place, stronger than ever. When I said I had become my own mine, I didn't expect the gemstones to behave similarly. They still don't hurt, but look how atrocious and lumpy I look. I cannot wear anything without it being bothersome. So, rather than lose my figure forever to this blessing, maybe a slight curse, I've sought medical advice. If I may be frank, it is my professional opinion that you should accompany me back to Cantalot General at once. We need to conduct some testing right away. Uh, must I? I have so much work left to do, darling. Fashion Week is only three months away, and I'm already falling behind schedule. This is something I have never seen before in my many years in this profession. I strongly urge you to consider. Oh, all right. A magic cleanse or two will probably solve the issue anyway. I can sacrifice a day or two tops. Patient was admitted immediately to Canterlot General. Data log, hoofs day six of foliary, seventh day of the hospital stay. Procedure performed, fifth magical cleansing. Results? No current rejuvenative effect. Additional test results. Initial blood tests have proven inconclusive of evidence for abnormalities. Subject notes. Dr. Colton examined the subject today and found five more growing gem pustules located in the following areas. Left shoulder, underbelly, base of the horn, and two more protrusions on the left flank. Attached is Subject 1's second recorded interview with the subject's primary nurse, Gentleheart. Hello, how are you feeling today? How am I feeling? Horrendous, that's how. I came to you for help, and since doing so, things have only gotten worse. I don't know what you've been doing to me, but it has to stop now. I assure you, Mom, the doctor and his staff are working tirelessly They're to... Everywhere. I haven't had a single thought about conjuring one since being admitted, but they still grow. Look here, the one under my hoof. See how it's protruding? I can't even walk anymore without it making my stride awkward. And don't think I don't hear the snickering. Oh, look, Miss Rarity bumbling around and raging like a lunatic. Look how funny she walks. Disgraceful. All of you. We are a professional place of healing and... Any staff who have ever said... Oh, you aren't even listening. That was just an example, you moronic twit. I don't have to. I don't have to hear the words to know that they're thinking them. I want out, you hear? Out! You fix this mess you made and you let me go at once! I will try to expedite the process as quickly as possible. But I do have a list of questions the doctor would like look, me to... Look what you have done. Come see. The subject is ushering me to her bed and hyperextending her left eyelid open, pointing to it with her right hoof. See it? Another one, just behind my eye. I can feel it. You you have to stop this now, or No, I don't No, I don't even want to think about what could happen. Go get me the doctor. Right this instant. But if I now I want to This was the end of the recording. Observation notes. Trot's day 8th of foliary, 9th day of hospital stay. Subject 1 caused a disturbance last night. After a routine patient check, Subject 1 managed to elude hospital staff and leave her room. A scalpel was procured from the restricted supply room and she returned to her room unnoticed. Staff was alerted when terrible screaming came from the subject's room. Subject 1 had barricaded her door and was attempting to insert the scalpel into the gemstone growth under the left eyelid. Security camera footage showed Subject 1 on her bed while the supplementary bed had been pushed up against the entrance, 
along with the other hospital furniture and equipment. In the attached footage, the subject is seen smiling and crying simultaneously, while rocking back and forth in a semi-fetal position. Although there is a lack of audio in the security camera footage, the night nurse was able to record the last words of the subject's individualized assault before orderlies accessed the room and restrained her. Attached is the recorded audio from this event. I feel it. I can feel it. I almost got it. <laughs> yes, I'm at a peak. <laughs> it's coming out. I can do it myself. It doesn't even hurt. <laughs> Subject 1 has been moved to the maximum security wing of the hospital to receive round-the-clock surveillance. She seemed unaware that her left eye was hanging loose from its socket, with visible trauma from the previous night's incident. Traces of a blue liquid were found within the exposed eye socket. A sample was taken for testing. The subject did not engage in conversation with any hospital staff. Data log, Stallion Day, 11th of February, 12th day of hospital stay. Procedure performed, surgical removal of eye. Result, non-applicable. Additional test results, bluish liquid sample result delayed. The initial testing facility was unable to come to any conclusive results. The sample was sent to another facility for retesting. Subject notes, Staff members have reported difficulty in managing and treating Subject 1. Common complaints include heightened and long-lasting anger, a raised volume or pitch to her voice when speaking to staff, and short, curt responses to questions with the inclusion of foul language. Subject 1 was restrained when she threw a breakfast tray at an orderly. This was a temporary precaution as instructed by Dr. Colton. Subject 1 will be undergoing the long overdue surgical removal of the loose left eye due to hostility in her insistence to fix it herself. Dr. Colton has insisted the patient be sedated in anticipation of the procedure. Observation Notes Mare's Day, 12th of February, 13th day of hospital stay. Subject 1 is still recovering from surgery. Dr. Colton has instructed staff to interact with the subject unsedated. Unsubstantiated growth has occurred since the procedure's conclusion. Sapphires protruding from the eye socket have grown another three inches, opening the socket further and marring most of the left side of the face. The sapphire count at this time is 142 distinct gemstones in 57 different places on the body. Refer to the attached chart for exact locations. Subject is now unable to walk as gemstones are protruding from beneath all four of her hooves. Staff has been instructed to start filing down these particular gemstones, but have been advised not to attempt to dislodge any remaining stones for fear of organ or muscle entanglement. Extra caution is strongly advised for this procedure. Nurse Jolly Hope was admitted for lung irritation from breathing in the gemstone particles. Oxygen masks are now mandatory for all interactions with the subject. Data Log Flanks Day, 16th of February, 17th day of hospital stay. Procedures performed, attempted gemstone removals. Result, non-applicable. Subject 1 resisted and refused the procedure. Additional test results. The bluish liquid test results received from the Equestrian Institute of Rockology. Results indicate that the sample consists of millions of microscopic gemstone fragments, giving it the illusion of a liquid substance. Dr. Colton rejected these results 
and is resubmitting additional samples to several external testing facilities. Subject notes. Subject 1 insists that she is too ugly to be seen by staff and continues to fight against any procedure. Current sapphire count is 267 distinct stones. 16 additional stones of varying colors found, breaking from the traditional blue. In the last 24 hours, Subject 1's fur has rapidly shed in its entirety. No immediate causation can be determined without further testing. According to nursing staff, Subject 1 has not eaten any meals in three days. When attempting to insert an emergency IV for liquid nutrients, the skin was found to be impenetrable by needle or blade. The skin is firm to the touch and stone-like in resistance. A biopsy of a skin sample from the left forehoof was also expedited with the resubmitted testing samples. Observation Notes Canter Day, 17th of February, 18th day of a hospital stay. This unscheduled audio recording took place from 12.44 p.m. to 1.58 p.m. When recovered, the recorder was covered in an unidentified multicolored goo-like substance, partially corrupting the tape. The following clip was the only salvaged audio from said incident. This is Nurse Gentleheart. What we're hearing right now is coming from Subject 1. For the past 12 minutes, the subject has been violently regurgitating gem-like substances. It's all right. The doctor is coming. Oh, oh. It's in my eye. It's in my eye. Get him out of here. Don't touch the... <coughs> this is unprecedented. She's still going. <coughs> Give me those rags. It's seeping through. Miss? Miss, can you hear me? Clarity? She's not responding. Where is Dr. Colton? Following the incident, Dr. Colton ordered Subject 1's hospital room to be quarantined from all staff. Temporary biohazard barriers were put into place to keep all hazardous materials from leaving the infected area. A hazmat crew has been contacted. Their earliest open appointment is in one week. Security footage from 12.30 p.m. to 2.30 p.m. was discovered missing. An internal investigation has been launched, and recovery measures are being made. As of the completion of this log, there has been no success locating or recovering this footage. Observation Notes Withers Day, 21st of February. The following recording is a statement from Miss Gentleheart during her exit interview. It was horrible. I, I don't think I'll ever be able to unsee it. It wasn't just coming from her mouth. It, it was coming out of everywhere. It just... We couldn't do anything. We, we tried. We truly did. Most of us weren't even in our proper hazmat suits, the ones Dr. Colton instructed us to wear. I heard one of the orderlies was already admitted. I think he got it in his eye. It was so much thicker than the first sample and with multiple colours. Somebody said it was liquid crystals. <laughs> I didn't believe them at first, but I saw it. I saw the room. I couldn't help myself. We just left her in there for three days and there wasn't a single peep. We're medical professionals, damn it. We're supposed to help ponies, not sequester them and starve them out. Yes, 
I forged Dr. Colton's signature, but it was the only way anybody would let me into that room. She was there, only... It wasn't her. A, a gemstone, a, a crystal, crudely pony-like in shape, curled to the floor in a fetal position, like, like some kind of sculpture. No fur, no mane, no tail, just rock but I saw a horn and a slab of stone with that same kind of mane and and tail twirl <sighs> that's not all though the room it it was covered I expected to find some kind of ooze or goop maybe even solidified into a mush but there wasn't anything of that all, you know those cracked open geodes that ponies sometimes collect. It was like a whole room of that. The bed, the equipment, the hell, even the camera. Some of them were three, four feet long. Just, just cluster after cluster of these horrible crystal gemstone abominations. I don't regret my decision to try and help her. Maybe some part of me is glad I'm being fired from a place that would abandon one of Equestria's saviors to this fate. I would have no regrets at all, but... I think I'm at a point where I can't keep this to myself any longer. I really need somebody to examine this. I, I touched the crystals on Rarity's flank bare a month ago in that first interview. Now... See? Lump. Maybe I'm just paranoid because of everything I've seen, or maybe... Oh. And all those dresses. All those customers. Oh, has anybody checked on them? Oh, sweet Twilight, what are we going to do? Oh. Gentleheart was thereafter admitted into Canterlot General. Her records were sealed and are unavailable for this report. Although the data is still inconclusive, we are awaiting the test results from Subject 1's biopsy. At this stage of the outbreak, we have compiled 248 case studies of ponies experiencing similar symptoms. Staff is limited in resources due to the difficulty of the remaining subjects containing Subject 3 and Subject 4, and locating Subject 2 is a top priority. Emergency staff has been instructed to turn away patients beyond our help. Subject 5 is currently cooperative and under observation of Dr. Colton, myself. Subject 5 shows no deterioration compared to the others and continues to ask about the whereabouts of Subject 1.